Today I'm showing you how to make a very simple hand animation, like this one I used in my Halloween rig. So in order to do that we're just gonna use shape layers. I'm just using one curve to create the first finger. Um, so it's just a curve on which I'm applying stroke in the shape layer. Um, then you can just simply duplicate this finger and create all the other fingers you need for your hands. So in this cartoony style, I'm going for a design with four fingers on my hand, which is a very popular kind of design for cartoons. Um, then uh, I'm creating here the shape for the palm of the hand. So it's just a very basic closed shape like this one. So you just need to take your time, make some adjustments uh, until it looks right. Now, of course, I need to um, add a fill to that shape. So I'm going here in the shape layer, make sure the fill color is selected. I'm using the same as my stroke. So what we need now is to add the thumb and it's the same process as for the other fingers uh, with a curve on the shape layer. And very important, now it's time to rename the layers to keep it clean and tidy. So after we've done that, I'm adding some layer styles uh, to my layers. So uh, here I'm using inner shadows and the inner shadows are going to help me add uh, directional light. For best results, uh, you want to play with the size and the noise of the effect. And uh, this will help with the contrast in my design. While we have some depth and volume now to this design, uh, we can see uh, it's looking wrong. So there are several ways to fix that. With my shape layer selected, I'm gonna go to the masking tool and here it shows me this tool creates shapes, but I want the tool to create masks. So while I click on tool creates masks, I can now mask my shape layer. Really, that's, that's just a great tip you want to know about uh, masking shape layers and working with shape layers. And with using the feathering properties of the mask, you can mask out parts of your shape layer. So we have a seamless connection between the palm of the hand and the finger here. And uh, for the thumb, it's gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna place the layer behind. Now to complete my design, I'm just uh, creating a solid and I'm masking my solid to uh, go and create a shadow inside my hand just below the fingers here. So I'm using the feather of the mask and here I'm tweaking with some noise and try to match the color of my design to have a nice shadow here. And uh, then I am uh, kind of reshaping that shadow to uh, make it match better the shape of my hand. As you might be able to see here, uh, the feather of my shadow is bleeding out of the shape of my hand. So what I like to do is go here and click on this little feature on my layer, which is the uh, preserve the underlying transparency. Now it means any shape you put on top will be cut out through the shape which is underlying. So that's why it's called the preserve underlying transparency. And now it's time for rigging. In order to do that, uh, I'm using Duic latest beta version. I'm going to put the link in the description of the video so you can uh, go ahead to the rainboxlaboratory.org and download the latest version available. And I strongly invite you to donate uh, for this free tool, which is just amazing. So once you have the uh, Duic panel installed in your After Effects, you're going to want to click on the Links and Constraints menu. And right here, with your shape layer selected, you really need to have the path of your shape layer selected, you can click on add pins and that's exactly what it's gonna do. You're gonna have all those little shapes which can now control the path of your shape layer. In order to have a proper rig, now I have to parent each joint of my finger. So I'm gonna do this from the tip of the finger to the last one in the chain of joints. Once I've done that, I can go and get the rotation property of each of my joints. And what happens is that when I'm moving around the rotation, you can see it's gonna uh, move the whole finger. And now when I rotate the second joint, I can uh, rotate the second part of my finger. And this is how you can properly rig the path of a shape layer with Duic. So what is very important is that instead of having just one set of keyframes 
for the path of my shape layers, I can have two different sets of keyframes for each joint of my shape. This is how I can add follow through and overlap on my animation. This is really the best setup uh, for this kind of design. And right now I'm just going to go ahead and uh, clean up my composition. Uh, I'm going to select all the layers I don't really need to see here uh, for my animation process and I'm just going to shy those layers. And I'm going to repeat the same process for uh, the other shape layers. So for the second finger, once again, with the path selected, I'm going to click on Add Pins. And now I'm going to parent uh, those layers all together and add my rotation properties. I've speed up the process here, so I got all my three fingers now rigged and animated with the overlaps on my keyframes right here. And we can notice here that the uh, masking of my finger uh, with the feathering is revealing uh, how it's detached from the hand. So I'm adding a keyframe here on the path of my palm. What I want to do is to change my shape so it can match the position of my finger when it's at its highest point and when it's at its lowest point. This way I have the animation of the palm of my hand uh, which is adapting with the position of the finger. And inside my Duic panel, I want to go to the links and constraints. From there, I want to go back to my finger animation and select all its keyframes. So I'm going to click on Pick Control and it's going to detect automatically which is the highest value and the lowest values of my rotation here. So after you've clicked Next in the Duic panel, I'm going to select the two keyframes of the animation of the palm of my hand and back to the Duic panel, you're going to click now on Connect Properties and this way the rotation animation of my finger is going to drive the animation of my shape. Now you can see as I am moving away the keyframes of the rotation of my finger, it is still driving the animation of the shape of the palm of my hand. So that's a very powerful thing to use connectors with Duic. Now for the thumb, I decided to keep it simple because I know it's going to loop and be part of a walk cycle. So yeah, I just um, animated with um, three keyframes and um, it's being part of the loop now and uh, we're pretty much done for the animation of this hand.